Now, Goldman Sachs is one of the biggest investment banks in the world. Its power and its influence is legendary. Among its former employees, Henry Paulson, the former US Treasury Secretary, Mario Draghi, the president of the European Central Bank, and Mark Carney, who is now, of course, governor of the Bank of England. Goldman Sachs, which had a controversial role in the global financial meltdown, to put it mildly, rarely goes public with its views. But now, in an exclusive interview with our economics editor, Faisal Islam, it's opening up. And warning that if Britain were to exit the EU after the promised referendum, it would have to rethink its plans for a UK base. The world's corporations, banks and governments make a pilgrimage to this airy portal near London's Fleet Street to the most powerful investment bank in the world. They come to borrow, to lend, to trade and be counselled on mega money matters. Respected and feared, so discreet is Goldman Sachs that the name is entirely absent outside and you'll only find one small logo inside its offices. For years it's operated below the radar, but now it's spoken exclusively to Channel 4 News about crisis culpability, its attempts to give back to the UK economy and the future of this industry. So you guys are the high priests of high finance. Um, do you feel that the flack that you've got has been... Um, just because you're a lightning rod, because you're the biggest, or do you think, do you concede that there were, some of this stuff was justified? Look, I, I think we have a very important position in finance built up over many years. I think, you know, if you're going to take the plaudits when things are going well, it's not surprising that when things go badly, uh, you know, you're the, also the center of attention. I, I think we run our firm in an extremely uh, ethical and moral way, and, and then we look to work hard to make sure that those standards are maintained. Anything we can do to improve our firm and improve the industry, we're going to continue to do. To do. We never accept, expect that we'd be perfect, but we want to try to, to run our business to very, very high standards. After the credit crisis, Goldman had its own reputational deficit. Like all the other investment banks, Goldman was a key part of the fog of complexity that brought about the global bank crisis. Of particular note, the deals over complex mortgage products. One ex-Goldman trader, Fabrice Touré, recently found liable for six counts of fraud. And the lucrative Goldman deal that helped Greece massage down its debt pile ahead of Euro entry. And so what went wrong when those considerations weren't at the forefront of your of your companies think? I think we're in a different environment. I think, as I said, you know, transactions were more complicated, they were more leveraged, there was more uh, room to, at, at the margin, not really understand individual transactions and what was going on. I think we've stamped that out. I think we've made it abundantly clear to anybody who engages in any kind of transactions, they absolutely have to know all the risks and all the potential returns. You're turning down things you would have done 10 years ago? Absolutely, we're turning down things that we, would have done 10, we wouldn't have done 10 years ago, whether it's due to the sophistication the client, whether it's due to reputational issues, whether it's due to do we think that that's an appropriate transaction for the client to take on. I'm not talking about legality here. Everything we did we felt was legal, but here we're talking about what's appropriate and what's reputationally uh, sensitive and those sort of things we're absolutely turning down. Well, well let's unpack that a, a little bit. It, you know, in this building, uh, the very famous deal to do with Greece was done um, where it, uh, your bankers helped mask uh, some of Greece's debt position ahead of the euro entry. You wouldn't do that deal again? We absolutely wouldn't do a transaction like that today. And more than that, there have been transactions of that ilk that have been presented to us by other European sovereigns that we've turned down because we felt there wasn't the appropriate transparency surrounding them. Was it a mistake to develop, trade, sell, create some of these very complex well, mortgage that, that's exactly what I That's exactly what I said to you. I think the complexity of these transactions was beyond the sophistication of some of the people in it. And, you did know, you understand you, that? So did, did I understand? Did you understand all of these Look, things? The mortgage, the mortgage business was principally a business done in the US. I mean, it was principally created and structured there. So was I an expert in the mortgage business? No, absolutely not. But did I learn a lot of lessons from what happened in the mortgage? Absolutely. Stockport, Greater Manchester, most famed for an actual work of high engineering, but the financial engineers of Goldman have been at work with a family firm, Windmill Tapes and Labels. This new, new investment. So As part of an attempt to inspire 10,000 small businesses with cutting-edge, Goldman-style business nows. In fact, Windmill ended up taking over another firm 20 miles down the road in Congleton. During the, the course, we learnt about identifying opportunities, we learnt about business valuation. Whilst we already had the idea there, 
and of course helped cement that and put it into, into action. So sticky labels in Stockport, not exactly what you'd imagine Goldman Sachs, one of the world's biggest banking behemoths, would trouble itself with. But they are, and the question is why? What we're really trying to do is get to young entrepreneurs in the US and the UK. In the UK, we've now got to about 600 businesses. We want to help them build their businesses. These are bright young people who have all kinds of different experiences. And we want to channel their energy and, and make sure that they know how to approach a bank, how to write a business plan, get mentoring, anything we can do to push their businesses forward. What drew you to it? I mean, let's just be frank about this. Going and doing it with Goldman. Goldman's willingness to say it's changed is producing some results. The shadow business secretary keen to talk to some of these small and high-tech businesses that have been through the Goldman Sachs programme. Politicians have relentlessly criticised banking, but Chuka Amuna says he wants to see more like this. The financial services sector has got to be a big part of the solution, and what you see here is Goldman's, a quite infamous big name, seeking to be part of the solution and demonstrably showing that it is from the businesses I've spoken to. Back at base, the micro or company trading floor, this as close as you can get to any Goldman Sachs trading floor with any type of camera moving or still. It's actually shares, bonds, credit derivatives, anything to do with a single company name. Goldman may soon benefit from a change in the way the Bank of England supports the British financial system. It is one of the most important functions of a central bank like the Bank of England. The offering of backstop funding during a financial crisis, typically to ordinary high street banks that take deposits. But last month, Governor Mark Carney publicly pondered whether this privilege should be spread to so-called broker-dealers. Basically, that means two or three big city institutions, one of which would be Goldman Sachs. Many people will find this unthinkable, the idea that some of the proprietary trading, what's occasionally known as a casino, would, why does that need to be backstopped by British well, taxpayers? Well, of course, I mean, you know, in, in advance of things like the Volcker Rule, proprietary trading businesses, pure proprietary trading businesses, are not ones that you'll find at Goldman Sachs and the broker dealer anymore. There are plenty of lending businesses, plenty of businesses where we provide capital, liquidity to big corporations. And frankly, when they need it, you know, then we need liquidity too. And so, you know, those are the kind of assets that you would see us try to finance at the Bank of England. Of course, the Bank of England would only take good collateral and only take it at appropriate haircuts. The immediate future of investment banking and Goldman Sachs is no less intriguing than the recent past, with thousands of jobs, potentially new facilities, highly dependent upon Britain's continuing membership of the European Union. All that despite the fact that the EU is cracking down on bonuses. New Brussels rules being fought against by bankers and the Chancellor come into force in January, limiting bonuses to double a banker's salary. What would your team do for 250% of salary that they wouldn't do for 100? 85% of their salary. What's the, Listen, we, it's we, a different we, world. Yeah, of course it's a different world and, and we operate in a highly competitive area. I mean one of the things that you see the regulator uh, talking about a lot is they want to make sure that the best people stay in the UK and that they don't get attracted to go to other places around the world because they want people who have an excellent record in managing businesses to be in London and that's what we want too. This empty office block at the back of Goldman's HQ is set to be an entirely new facility housing thousands more Goldman's bankers. But whether the diggers move in depends on the climate in this country, particularly the growing debate about whether the UK should leave the European Union. You know, the idea that we would leave Europe and then we would have to go and negotiate with 27 different uh, sovereign states about our passports, who we could do business with, how we would do business, and I don't think that would be an environment that would be particularly conducive to having good negotiations. I think it would be a big drain on the UK economy. Would you leave? I think we'd have to see the circumstances at the time, but again, I think it would be difficult for us to be as influential and important in capital markets if there were all kinds of regulations that prohibited us from moving freely like we currently enjoy and that we could have in another European capital. So we'd have to decide. But you know, today we have real-time decisions to make about how we prepare ourselves for these sort of, uh, these, these sort of outcomes. You know, we, uh, we, for example, own a piece of land in London where we might build a very large building. And certainly when we weigh up the pros and cons, you know, the UK being in Europe is one of those things to the negative if, if they were to leave. So another big building in London at stake for the big bank that survived the bust. Here they say things have changed. 
Goldman Sachs has always been rather effective at making change work for its bottom line.